Thank you for staying with your world. My name is Gladys Gashande and we are now shifting gears to take a look at some of the circumstances out there and also opportunities in making businesses have a new, a new list of life, especially in this pandemic. And somebody who has invested in this is Mesha Lois, who is the CEO, founder, board director at Sandy Limited Kenya. Thank you for your time. All right. So you have been in the logistics, actually ICT company or background. Why Sandy? I mean, Sandy was uh, out of necessity. Uh -huh. So we are a tech company uh, based here in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, offices in Nairobi, uh, Kampala, and our Cote d'Ivoire as well in Abidjan. And Sandy, uh, the reason Sandy is based on our own experiences, um, having been in space in the last uh, couple of years. And what Sandy does uh, is we provide businesses an app uh, where they push a button, a vehicle comes, picks their goods magically, and text them to their customers. Mm -hmm. That's that's Sandy. Okay, and Sandy, in this case, when you talk about the vehicle, it is a what? A motorbike? So it is a motorcycle. Uh -huh. It is a van. It is a pickup. It's a huge truck mm -hmm. uh, across the country, across the borders. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows? Maybe uh, in future we'll be doing it on drones. Ah, yes. okay. So you got into the business way before even the pandemic came around. What yeah. are these gaps that you saw? So the gaps that we saw, if you look at uh, uh, Kenya, East Africa, and also Africa as a whole, so you'll find most logistics players have between one to three vehicles. So as a business, when you're trying to move your goods to your customers, you have to uh, typically deal with multiple suppliers. So you keep a list of 20, 25, up to 50 suppliers who you have to call every single morning. Or if it's motorcycle, I mean, uh, there's no motorcycle company here that has 200 or 1,000 motorcycles that can actually use to transport goods. So then what we did is uh, we brought these guys all together on one platform. Mm -hmm. uh, you push a button, uh, gets uh, your uh, vehicle comes, a motorcycle comes, and then delivers those goods to your customers. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, what informed the markets you launched into? So what informed the markets we launched to uh, primarily driven by our customers. So most of our customers, customers that we work with here in Kenya, are also in the countries that we, uh, we are in today. So primarily driven by that, but also by the opportunity that uh, we see across the continent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and which of these industries stand out for you? Which are your best customers? So three industries. Uh -huh. and, 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 and it's interesting that these three industries are also the key drivers of our economies, not just in Kenya, East Africa, but also across the continent. So uh, one is consumer goods. Uh, so if you have suppliers, manufacturers of consumer goods, that's an industry that stands out for us. The other industry is agriculture. So we do a lot of uh, farm inputs. So we help post companies transport uh, farm inputs, fertilizers to, uh, to, to farmers, but also uh, the farm produce as well back to the markets. Uh, the other industry that stands out for us is e-commerce. So that's growing, not just the e-commerce, not uh, the big e-commerce companies, not just the big e-commerce companies that you might know of, but also the smaller ones. There's many businesses that sell on WhatsApp, sell on Facebook, sell on Instagram, we actually help them uh, deliver those goods to their customers. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Uh, you find uh, a young person straight out of university or college. They start a small business uh, selling either shoes or cosmetics right from their house. Uh, they have the channels, the tools, the, the social networks, the Facebook, the Instagram to sell. And Sandy does uh, the delivery and, and also a payment collection for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And so how do I be part? How can I be part of Sandy? What do you normally look at for you to engage? Yeah. So two side. We are two sided market. So we have uh, the transporter side or the underriders as well. So uh, if you have a vehicle, uh, if you're a motorcycle rider, we prevent you, uh, we train you, you join our platform. Uh, after that, uh, we present you to customers. Uh, so customers are able to, whether you're a uh, fast moving consumer good company, agriculture dealing in farm inputs or e-commerce company, mm -hmm. uh, you get on a platform. Uh, it's an app uh, or you go to our website, sendy.com. Uh, and from there, you push a button, a vehicle will come to you, we'll track it uh, throughout the channel. Uh -huh. Okay, it looks like you had seen the pandemic coming, you know, and set yourselves right. But how has the pandemic catapulted your business? Actually, our business has grown uh, during the pandemic. Um, and it has grown uh, because we have actually helped businesses uh, be able to stay, uh, stay um, uh, basically stay afloat. Um, I mean, right now, you know, as there's lockdowns, there's curfew and all that, restaurants, for example, are not able to open uh, 
open uh, for uh, dining. And what we do is we provide these motorcycles, we provide these vehicles to be able to deliver, uh, deliver these goods to these customers. But most, uh, what's most exciting is we've been able to, uh, for drivers who are on our platform, we've been able to give them income to continue earning a living off our platform, which is very exciting, something that uh, at Sandy we hold very dearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and you are also, as you said, coming to bridge a gap for businesses yeah. out there. In as far as what they get back from you, what is the feedback you get? The feedback we get is uh, businesses are now able to scale faster. Uh, so as a business now, you don't have to, uh, we'd send you don't have to own your vehicle. So uh, a business that just set up or uh, is just in the growth phase, um, what we now do is you focus on your core business, focus on whatever you're manufacturing, whatever you're supplying. When it comes to now getting those goods to your customers, you basically scale with us as fast as, uh, as, fast as you can. You don't have to buy new vehicles, which is also uh, quite uh, expensive to do or capital intensive to do. So we give that to you. So we allow you to, uh, to scale. The other thing, it's very affordable. I mean, for some businesses, we've been able to reduce their cost to serve their customers or to deliver goods to their customers by over 40 percent so again affordability comes there and then last it's reliability so you know that if you push a button on sandy your goods are going to get to your customers uh, as they are mm -hmm. yeah. and how do you ensure that uh, that is actually safeguarded yeah so good so two things uh one is the first thing is um we vet all the drivers that come on our platform so uh, we do all the background checks, we vet them, we look at the vehicles and motorcycles before they're on our platform. So that's, that's a first piece. The second piece uh, is we have insurance on top of that. So if anything goes wrong, then you're rest assured as a Sandy customer uh, that uh, you'll be compensated for any loss that happens in, uh, in between uh, uh, your premise and your customer's doorsteps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and if you want to compare the Kenyan market uh, with the other markets you're in, how are we faring? I think Kenya, uh, from an adoption perspective, uh, I think we're still far ahead. And I think the opportunity is here for us. And that's why actually we're headquartered here in, in Nairobi. Uh, I mean, we have the, we have, uh, the talent here uh, from a technology perspective. I mean, Kenya, Nairobi is going to be a hub for technology companies in the near future. Mm -hmm. And there's an amazing talent here in Nairobi. All our engineers, uh, I mean, as a tech company, all our engineers sit here in Nairobi, come from most of them, I would say 95% are from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that perspective, like we, uh, we, we are far ahead. Of course, uh, the likes of M-Pesa also helps because then from a payment perspective and mm -hmm. also adoption perspective becomes much easier as opposed to the other markets where things like payments uh, or mobile payments are still uh, not as fast uh, or growing as fast as here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But I would say uh, uh, the lessons we are learning here, we're able to replicate that in these markets, the other markets that we are in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, speaking of best practices beyond uh, the continent into their other uh, world, how is that looking like? Uh, today we are focused in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we provide our solutions across the continent. We want to be uh, the logistics platform across, across the continent. But we're also seeing what's happening globally. We're seeing what's happening in, uh, in Europe, what's happening in the US, what's happening in Southeast Asia as well. And I think there is uh, kind of like a revolution around uh, logistics and also just really uh, uh, decentralizing or devolving logistics in a, in, in, in a, in a way that uh, enables everybody to participate. Mm -hmm. So in the past, you'll find uh, big logistics company are the only ones that would actually uh, go and service some of these customers that we service today big multinationals. But today we take someone on the roadside, we bring them on the platform, uh, we uh, take those best practices that uh, this multinational uh, logistics company will do, we train this person, and now they compete with the multinational. So that single person, that Mwangi Otien who is on the roadside, now gets uh, to compete with the multinational uh, logistics companies. Uh -huh. and, and, and speaking of which, you said you use uh, motorcycles, cars, vans, and even lorries. Yeah. Are these your assets or are you like other companies that are, use other people's assets and just provide the platform? So we, just, we provide the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide the platform. Uh, we don't own the vehicles uh, today. So we have, um, we have today, we have over, uh, over 10,000 or so vehicles across the markets that uh, that we are in. Uh, we don't en own any of those, but we provide the platform to uh, generate businesses for these uh, uh, drivers, motorcycles, lorries, mm -hmm. and providing seamless service to our customers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So if I want to actually invest in you, want to give you my asset, whatever it is, how do I start this all? So how you start that off, uh, one is you register on our platform, uh, very easy. You can provide us the details, uh, what type of lorry you have or what type of motorcycle you have. 
Uh, after that, our team will get back to you uh, with information on, on when uh, our next uh, training is. Mm -hmm. We'll evaluate, uh, evaluate, vet you. After that, uh, we'll train you, and then you'll be on our platform and you start earning money on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that Kenya it seems to be way ahead, uh, you know, compared to other markets. Are you surprised that we are doing so well in Kenya? Is this something that you had envisioned? Um, before Sandy, I'd actually worked in a couple of countries helping uh, multinational really uh, um, set up their sales and distribution across the continent. Uh, and to be honest, I wasn't surprised, but really that was an opportunity for us. We're saying this is going to be the best place to start this company, this uh, technology company. Uh, which will now make it easier for us to go into these other countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting that you applaud Kenya so much, yet yeah. there's so many people who say doing business in this country is a bit difficult. What's different for you? I mean, uh, it's difficult. For, I mean, I, I really, uh, I can relate to that. It's mm -hmm. difficult. I mean, there are things that we could do better. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, we are having these issues on taxes, as, uh, taxes. I mean, in our space as well, you have now the new digital taxes, uh, uh, taxes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this new uh, tax regime that is also coming, which is, which is quite a challenge. Um, and, and, and these are all new to us. They're new to the reg regulator. They're also new to us as well. So those, those are challenges that, uh, that, we, see, uh, that we see there. Uh, but I would, I would say that within these challenges, we've been able to navigate and, and just try to be as resilient as possible. Um, of course, we can do better, uh, but we've, we've tried to be as resilient as possible. Uh -huh. Now, just uh, to dig a little bit on your background, now that you've said you've worked with different companies, I mean, you were named East African Young Entrepreneur to watch in 2011. Today, yeah. you sit here yeah. as the CEO and founder of Sendu. Yeah. What is this that catapulted you to this success? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what brought me here is I've, I've, uh, right from college, I've always had uh, uh, this urge uh, or this drive to, uh, to really uh, create tools that help people participate in the economy uh, and build technology uh, uh, tools to be able to, uh, to, to get people to, to participate in the economy. So make it easy for people to trade. Uh, and, and the reason uh, I, I have this drive is I really believe that the opportunities are here in the continent, here in Kenya and East Africa and across the continent, the opportunities are there. So just we just need to bridge that gap between this opportunity and earning a living. And, and that's, that, that's where I'm passionate. Uh, I'm, I'm really passionate about those tools that really bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we were just speaking about some of the industries that seem to be standing even within the pandemic, and yeah. ICT is yeah. one of them, artificial intelligence and agribusiness. What would you tell yeah, the young and those who are also changing or adapting other industries, even in this new uh, market? Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, right now we're in, we're in a pandemic, it's a crisis. Mm -hmm. But again, if you look historically, if you look at the last 20 years, uh, the businesses that you see today, the likes of Google, the likes of, of, of Facebook, the big businesses that you see today, mm -hmm. were actually started during, a, d during either a, a recession, a crisis mm -hmm. or so. So within this crisis, there's also opportunities for us to be able to create new tools, to be able to create new businesses as well, new business models as well. So I would actually encourage uh, young people to really look at that, uh, at this as an opportunity as well, uh, and, and be able to create uh, those, those uh, business models that are possible during this particular time. In 10 years time, I think uh, if you and I have a chance to sit here again, mm -hmm. we'll see that businesses that will be, uh, the largest businesses that will be there in those many years, would have started during this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And speaking of 10 years, it's been 10 years, and now you sit here as a CEO and founder. What are the things, perhaps the gaps in the system that made it a little bit difficult for you to get here, yeah. but some also that helped you get to where you are today? Yeah. So some of the challenges, uh, I would say, uh, we've had uh, over the years, uh, I would say two or three challenges. So one is, um, uh, I would say, from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. um, we're creating a new business model, right? Um, a business like Sendy uh, hasn't existed uh, in Kenya or in the continent before. So we're creating a new business model. And, and the challenge there is uh, there's not enough talent that really understands what we're doing. So what we have to do is really uh, do a lot of training there. So that's a challenge. That means we, we're not moving as fast as, 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 we, as we'd want to. We're still moving as fast, uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, that talent, getting that talent that really understands this new business model is not there. So we have to do a lot of training. And I really do hope that as the businesses like Sendy, uh, I mean, us having started Sendy, would really create that, uh, would really spur that and create that talent base that will actually build the next businesses as well. So those are some of the challenges that we've got there. 
Uh, the other challenge we've seen is uh, just from, I mean, things like, let's say we have drivers that we're bringing on the platform. Mm -hmm. We have to, uh, we have to uh, vet you before you're on our platform. Uh, we have to check your documentation uh, and all that before you're on our platform. There's just no single way you can do that. Uh, I mean, if you go to other countries uh, that are actually more, much more advanced, like in Southeast Asia, you can actually go uh, on a single platform and verify everything about that particular, particular mm -hmm. driver or particular person. Here, it will take us a couple of days to be able to do that, which is unnecessarily long. Uh, but again, we've been able to build tools to be, uh, tools to be able to, uh, to, navigate, uh, to navigate that. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the challenges that we've seen there. Okay, and uh, there has been talk and a lot of talk, especially in this season, about the value of partnerships. Are, yeah. Is this something you're harnessing? Absolutely. So uh, value, I mean, we, from the very beginning, we've always looked at uh, Sandy as being uh, really highly driven by a partnership. So the first partnership we set up is, uh, is Safaricom, for example. So we are, we're a partner with Safaricom. Safaricom is one of our very early shareholders, actually, uh, in, uh, in this industry. So uh, that, that's a partner of ours. Most recently, we've also partnered with Toyota. And, and, and with Toyota, uh, we are able to now help uh, these drivers or partners or transporters be able to finance motorcycle, finance uh, lorries as well on the platform as we help them earn, uh, earn a living. And various partnerships that we've been able to form across uh, in the last couple of years to get us where we are today. Okay. Yeah. And still speaking about your accomplishes, accomplishments, what are you most proud of when you think about Sandy and the milestones you've made? What I'm most proud of when I think about Sandy uh, is we've been able to provide our drivers a decent income. Uh, we have uh, thousands of drivers who wake up today in the morning, uh, they power their phone, they push a button, and they start earning a living. That to be, uh, if you told me that a couple of years ago that what, that was going to be possible for thousands of drivers to be able to do that and for us to be able to enable that, uh, I, I would have told you probably uh, I'm, I'm dreaming. But seeing that today, uh, really proud of that, um, that we are able to do that. But also for businesses, uh, I mean, today a business, you wake up, you start a business, you don't worry about the distribution. You don't worry about how am I going to get this to, uh, to, uh, to my customers? Because most, most time, most of these businesses, they spend a lot in buying the vehicles or the motorcycles. Then they actually uh, invest in, in producing the products that they actually produce. And being able to eliminate that and make that seamless for them uh, has, uh, is, is something that we're really proud of. And lastly, something I'm also proud of, proud of is looking at last year during this pandemic. Uh, almost uh, every business like was was hit. Uh, people mm -hmm. are wondering how now are we gonna? I mean, I can't have uh, my staff or I can't have people uh, now walking around visiting customers or so. And for us, as Sandy, uh, just providing tools to be able to help them bridge that gap uh, during that time and during that uh, th that this crisis. Mm -hmm. Really proud of what our team have, have been able to do. Okay, and uh, you mentioned that Kenya has a potential to be an innovation hub, ICT hub uh, in this continent. What else needs to be done to ensure that this comes to reality and in turn uh, enable businesses such as yours? Yeah, so three things. I would say uh, the first thing is uh, training. Um, so I think we need to really invest in our education. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say that, I say it succinctly uh, by saying that uh, just really teaching our new learners how to ask questions, um, how to ask questions. I mean, we right now the information is all out there. I mean, you go to the internet, you get every single information you want. But it really depends on the question that you're asking, right? Uh, so really investing in education to really uh, uh, teach new learners, teach new, uh, the new group that is going to get into the job market. How do you ask questions? How do you critically think as well? Um, and how do we get into uh, uh, this space as well? As you mentioned, um, uh, tech, tech is going to be a huge driver in the next couple of years, and we can't avoid it. Uh, uh, we can't avoid it moving forward. So really training and getting resources around, uh, around that. So that's one. Two is just uh, uh, government being able to be, uh, uh, be out of the way and enable businesses to be able to, uh, to thrive. Because if we're able to thrive, we're going to export this. And if we export this, that means more revenues coming into the country and that means more taxes and that means we're all growing uh, we're all basically growing as uh, mm -hmm. as an economy for sandy in future in a couple of years if we're able to help even the businesses that are here in kenya sell to other countries as well um, and we uh, deliver to those countries or help them ship to those countries that would be uh, the kind of drivers that we will we'll be looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah. and speaking about the future what do you have in the future for your markets we have in the future right now, uh, we're looking at West Africa, uh, uh, starting with Cote d'Ivoire. So we just set up in Cote d'Ivoire. We're looking at those markets uh, there. We're looking at Ghana. We're looking at Nigeria. 
um, and also just really expanding across uh, across East Africa. So today, yes, we uh, we have offices here in and uh, in Kenya and Uganda. Uh, looking at the other uh, countries, we're looking at Tanzania, and also looking at the other smaller countries within uh, the East Africa region, mm -hmm. and really expanding across across the continent thereafter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, some of the economy drivers, as, in, as you mentioned earlier, agribusiness are normally saturated away from their urban centers. Yeah. So, do can we are we seeing Sandy outside the urban centers into the counties? Absolutely. I mean, today we deliver to those counties. Uh, I'm, I, as, as I mentioned, one of the industries that we work with is on the ag agriculture side, and we help uh, some of the businesses deliver uh, fertilizer, for example, to, this, uh, to these counties and to these farmers. Our next phase is helping. We work with companies, uh, for example, companies like Twigger, and we help them. Uh, we work together, we partner together to really uh, help uh, deliver also uh, the farm produce from their customers back to, uh, uh, back to, the, back to the city as well mm -hmm. and to, uh, to, to help them access those markets as well. So we're already there and, and really will just double down uh, in those counties as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, just to go back on your background, you co-founded On Demand Mobile. Yeah. Was this one of the ways you had already seen this going to give you know, birth, so to speak, yeah. to Sandy? Yeah. So my interest has always been uh, in logistics, which tech logistics uh, and payments. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and before that, before Sandy, uh, those are the areas, uh, for example, you mentioned On Demand, that's in the payment, uh, payment space. Uh, so really spent a lot of time there before uh, before Sandy as well. And also before Sandy, really built a lot of solutions for the bus companies that you see here around. That was around 2009 or so. Built a lot of solutions there for the bus companies, the logistics companies that you uh, see here around as well. Mm -hmm. So really that, I would say that was a preparation to what we're doing today. Uh -huh. Somebody yeah. is asking, would you say security is a concern for your business in this country? Security, uh, just uh, uh, tell me more about that. Security, literally policing of what it is that you do, like yeah. making sure your goods get to where they're supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's a concern of ours. Mm -hmm. And actually, we fundamentally be, build our platform to be able to take care of that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I mentioned is just making sure that uh, we verified and vetted all our drivers that are on our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, so as opposed to you going to a random, uh, a random person walking by the roadside and, and giving the person your good, uh, uh, we basically give you someone who already is vetted. We can uh, prove the identity or so. And we have a digital record of every transaction that happens. So we'll know this is where this, this particular good is coming from. This is, the person is uh, this is the person that is picking it. These are the GPS coordinates of this, uh, of this location. Mm -hmm. This is where it's going, it's going to. You can track it all through, uh, all through as well to where it's, to where it's going. Mm -hmm. And then over, over and above that, we also add uh, insurance on top of that. Okay, yeah. so even as we bring this conversation to a close, what is your perhaps brand promise to your customers today? What we're promising our customers, uh, Sandy, today is one is uh, we're going to give them time to be able to do more. So uh, we're going to take, uh, take the headache of delivering their, uh, their goods to their customers affordably uh, and transparently uh, in a scalable way uh, so, that's, so that they, they're able to focus on their core business and, do, and be able to do more. Uh, for uh, our drivers as well, our promise is really uh, ha continuing to help them earn a living, so making sure that they earn a decent living, uh, pushing more, uh, more revenue to them, not just during this crisis, but also as we, uh, as, 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 as we continue to grow. So really helping our business, business, businesses be able to do more. Mm -hmm. So kindly reiterate, if somebody needed more information on how to invest in you or to be part of this, how do they reach you? So as a customer, you just, uh, if you want to uh, try out Sendy, so just go to sendyit.com uh, or go to the Play Store or Google, uh, Google, Google App Store and uh, uh, download Sendy and push a button. I will send a vehicle, a motorcycle to pick your goods, deliver to your customer safely and affordably. If you have a motorcycle or you have a lorry or you have a van or a pickup and you want to be on our platform, uh, also just go to sendyit.com, uh, register. Within a couple of days, uh, you'll be on your way to start earning a living. Uh -huh. Well said, Mesh Aloy, CEO, founder, board director at Sandy Limited Kenya. Thank you for giving us more insight on what Sandy, a logistical com company, does in this country. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching your world. My name is Gladys Gashanja. Remember, tomorrow we'll be back, same time, same place, as we shed light on the social impact of COVID-19. Now, the impact of the third wave has had the government take stringent measures to curtail its spread, but has left a nation already grappling with tough economic times, as we mentioned earlier, desperate. So how best can this pandemic be handled with the welfare of Kenyans in mind? Victor Kiprop will steer that conversation from 7 a.m. See you then.
Thank you.